Okay, welcome everyone. My name is Alvaro Perez. I'm the Senior Product Manager for SmartWorks IoT, and today I'll be trying to demystify uh, Industry 4.0. First off, I want to cover why Industry 4.0 and why it's everyone making such a big fuss about it. The first one is because the industry, and especially in manufacturing world, is suffering a couple pressure points from, from the market. The first one is the supply and the demand. Uh, the supply is becoming more decentralized and demand is becoming more aggressive, uh, putting more pressure on cost and, and asking for more complex uh, solutions. And then on the other side, there are more uh, business model, uh, models expanding and it's changing completely the, the current landscape of, of how manufacturing uh, used to used to work. And the biggest trend here is how everything is, is starting to become as a service uh, solutions. So you're starting to sell less assets and more services uh, that are supported by those assets. But this type of changes could happen anytime. So why is now Industry 4.0 a key relevant uh, thing uh, that companies are seeking? The first one is because the dramatic, uh, the drastic change in technology that we have seen over the past years, um, the, the costs are lower, the compute power is is higher, and basically the maturity of all the solutions are are quite uh, larger. The second one is the processing and the storage capacity. Every single year, the capacity increases by a factor of two more or less. And, and the, the amount of data that, that we are able to process and to store, it also kind of doubles every, every year. So big data and machine learning techniques that uh, were known in the, in the 90s, 80s, uh, now can be applied with, with larger amount of the, with, with larger sets uh, of data. And, and give us uh, better results than, than ever. And then finally, connectivity and data generation uh, are two key components that are making everything that was possible, again, in the, in the 80s, uh, in, in, the local, in the local area. So being able to censor things, being able to use robotics and, and process automation and so on. We are taking it to a whole new level, being able to gather all that data into one sim uh, single place and to work with it. Uh, to achieve uh, solutions that were never possible before. Now, when people think about Industry 4.0, they normally think of a factory working like this. Um, and it's true that, that it can take the, the factory to, to a next level by, by applying different types of, of use cases that are quite, quite interesting, such as operation monitoring. So being able to track all your factory's KPIs, being, to, being able to track the OEE, uh, different different metrics that, that basically enable you to be on top of things, making sure that what get what has to be done gets done, and also that you're not sleeping on, on any things. You're also able to apply advanced logistics uh, by using uh, specific algorithms that it enabled you to optimize either internal routings of the, of the factory or even the communications between one factory and other uh, through the supply chain. Uh, and this also gives you the capability to do uh, planning and forecasting optimization. So being able to understand how, you, how your supply is going to behave over the next uh, months, but also how you need to provision your stock and, and ask your suppliers to optimize the, the current stock that it's on your, on your facilities, as well as to optimize costs um, due to changes in prices and things like that. Quality is also a key, a key aspect that can be, um, that can benefit from, from industry 4.0. Uh, the typical, the typical is uh, predictive quality. So being able to trace uh, different signals from your process, so that you can estimate the quality that is going to be manufactured before it gets manufactured, uh, enabling you to to take action before the mistakes happen, or reducing the the overall scrap that that the factory is also producing. Also, a very a very cool uh, use case that that has been developed over the past years is the capability to identify defects at the end of the line uh, use, using technologies such as computer vision, uh, which drastically reduces the, the manpower needed to, to check an assembly line or, or some processes that, that require a manual supervision, you are able to, to replace them by, by computer, computer edit uh, systems. And then finally, Probably the most uh, the most known uh, to a point where people are starting to to say things that that maybe even doesn't that don't make sense, right? Which is the predictive maintenance. 
the predictive maintenance has always been uh, the, the missing unicorn, right? I, I want to uh, know when the machine is going to fail uh, with months in advance. That's rarely the case. If, if the machine is going to fail months in advance, it's going to break suddenly. It's not going to uh, it's not going to be because of process signals or things like that. What you can really start to understand, or or what you can do, is to start to understand when your when your factory and where your different machines are they starting to work in a different way. And normally, different way in manufacturing means going to break. Okay. You won't be able to predict time. You won't be able to to react to to re to reset the machine so that it works it works better. But it will sure give you, uh, your maintenance department uh, an edge uh, towards fixing that machine, doing some preventive maintenance so that you can uh, avoid that that downtime that that normally end up, ends up happening. Okay. Now, Industry 4.0. Like I said, it, it has been a, um, made a bit of a marketing product over the past years, okay? And, and probably the fault has been uh, based on former consultants like, like myself, okay? And the biggest problem is that cons consultants think of, of factories or, or OT systems uh, in, in the following way. They're very, very comfortable with the business analytical level, uh, installing ERPs, business intelligence, and basically everything that it's company domain, okay? Uh, and then following the ISA 95 uh, structure, they know that there are things called MES, GMAU, QMS, um, SGAs that, that help you maintain and, and, and organize your plant. But these are still software programs that, that basically live in the, in the IT world. And then they know that there is this magical thing called the SCADA and the HMIs that basically help you control and monitor your whole plant, uh, that then it gets connected to all your PLCs, your RTUs, that finally gets to the sensors and the, and the drivers. But, um, as, as most of you know, this is rarely the case, right? Uh, there are few companies in, in the world that really have this perfect pyramid uh, with all the systems well interlined and, and well connected and everything talks to bottom up, up and, up, up and, up and bottom. And, and you also have this, this vast range of products and, and so on, right? Now, your CTO that, that might have a, a more accurate version of the, of the situation uh, they will have something similar to, to this drawing in their hand in their head. Okay, so they know that that it's not as simple as a as a fancy pyramid, but when you try to extrapolate and and think on on systems, subsystems, uh, networks, you can start to to more or less um, draw a picture like this one that I got from from the internet. Okay, but in this type of pictures, uh, I always like a couple, or I I always like to point out a couple things that are, um, I don't know, that are very wrong, okay? I see, a, I see a 95 it's a standard, okay? So it defines what has to happen between layer zero and layer four. And there is a reason for that. There is specific things that are meant to go in layer zero, specific things that are meant to go in layer one and so on until layer four. But here you start to see how you suddenly have a layer five because some guy thought that that it would be cooler to to have something overarching se several layer fours. There is also this layer three point five because <laughs> you didn't know where to put it if if it was something that that was it, it's clearly not an MES. Um, so suddenly you have some monitoring done by the SCADA and you call that a layer three and then of course you don't understand the difference between a SCADA sensors and PLCs. So you just put everything in the same box, right? The problem is that normally this layer zero to two, it's the, the most complex thing to, to access data and to gather information that, that you can have, okay? This is a, this is a plant, uh, a schematic. I, I tried to, to, to hide a few of the, of the information because uh, it's, it's, not, it's not the case, right? What normally happens in, 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 a, in a manufacturing plant is that you start with several lines, okay? And maybe the provider that that sold you those 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 lines or those machines, uh, they gave you OPC UA connectivity, right? And you're happy. Your whole factory works under the same protocol. That's perfect. 
but then you need to expand and you find this great deal of a factory that it's in a different country or in a different region and the problem is that the the types of communication that those machines um, have uh, are based on profinet for example and since you're getting a million discount because the machines are used but still in good condition you don't care that the that the compatibility of the networks are, are different and this story starts to grow and grow and grow. So you also have some old PLCs at the factory because the end of the line work with a provider that you have local and he didn't fulfill any standards. Uh, then you did this crazy project in 2010 where you included a data logger and now there is another technology in the plan that, that you don't know how to access. And then uh, the maintenance team decided to do a, a project and that project also has a different standard that was trying to unite the, the other standards but doesn't quite well so at the end of the day what you have is quite a mess of technologies and a mess of of, of different protocols that you need to that you need to um, that you need to handle okay and this is very normal if you're in this situation you should not be alarmed uh, this is this is what what growing means okay uh, needing to to adapt to change needed to take the, the the best outcomes that that are possible so this is perfectly normal but what this means is that industrial iot software ecosystems can be complex and they can be complex because when you discuss the the future with your with your boss with your manager with the ceo of the company or with with some consultants everyone is talking about the ultimate dashboard right i envision that we are going to have tablets running around the factory and in those tablets i'm going to be able to see everything i'm going to be able to see how the lines are performing i'm going to be able to detect uh, how, when when a, a particular machine is going to fail I'm even going to be able to put VR on top of it, so my my operators are going to walk with with a headset uh, that are it's going to be constantly telling them good things to do on the factory, right? The problem is that this is only 20 20 percent of of the total effort. Okay, it's it's really the, the the tip of the iceberg because underneath there is there is a lot of work that normally gets uh, unnoticed. The first part we more or less saw it at the beginning, which is the edge development. Okay, how do I connect to my actual assets, and how do I manage software inside of the factory? Because to access some PLCs, I need to speak OPC. To access some others, I need to speak a different technology. Then I might I might do an an RFDI uh, uh, project, so I need to add new technology here. So orchestrating all these technologies and especially making sure that all of them get to the same point where you can then uh, push that to to a cloud to an iot platform where, where everything is unified it's a it's a huge deal okay the second part is um, the DevOps side iot software tends to be running 24 7 uh, every every single day of the year and this means that you need to have provision servers with software that it's uh, automatically restarted, maintained, scaled, that it's secure, that it cannot be taken down, and this has to these these are operations that need to be taken by by very specific profiles that are quite uh, quite scarce in in the market right now. And then finally, you have the backend. The backend um, basically is all that logic that manages the the interactions between the devices, the users. Uh, it 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 deploys or it 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 accounts for the the business logic that needs to run. So when the OE it's below 60, please send an email to the manager. And when this machine fails, please send a ticket to SAP so that we can track it in our maintenance tool and these type of things. And this also requires some some specific knowledge that it's not always um, available for <clears throat> for the different teams. And this is what SmartWorks IoT does. SmartWorks IoT, it's a low-code IoT application development platform. It's built for developers by developers, uh, aiming to reduce a lot of redundant workflows that have to be done in IoT ecosystem projects. If I have to summarize SmartWorks IoT with one slide, is that that internal piece that no, was, that no one sees that enables you to connect to your devices and connect to, a end, to an end user app and be able to manage device connectivity, data storage, application, application logic engine, edge app orchestration and user access control. 
if the if your factory doesn't need an, an actual application running on a tablet and what you need is to understand the meaning of your data and and have a, a powerful dashboarding solution that can help you with that then you can use the internal piece that we have which is smartworks iot real-time visualization that enables you to do powerful dashboards uh, with dozens of, of data connectors and it enables you to control your devices uh, from a global perspective. And then finally, and specifically in manufacturing, we also have Edgeops and the Edge Compute platform. That is a framework that, that helps you to safely deliver code to the Edge. In these applications where you need some extra compute workload next to your devices, next to your machines, uh, that, that it's able to do protocol normalization, cloud connectivity, uh, container orchestration, you might even want to deploy complex predictive uh, algorithms next to the machine so that you reduce latencies and, and this type of, of issues. Then the Edge Compute platform managed by our Edge Ops uh, solution, it's, it's really the, the, the deal. And why all this? Uh, so, you can, so that you can do more with less. The front end is still under your control because of course we are not going to be able what what use cases are best for you uh, and you and, and every single factory has has different uh, different uh, use cases and it, and it enables you to do all of this with fewer skills uh, with a smaller team needed ensuring scalability and security since day one allowing you to take faster iterations and in the end uh, providing a flexible and configurable environment that helps you do more with less now, why is Marworks against others? The first one is because it's specialized for IoT ecosystems. If you're trying to build uh, the next Yelp or Facebook or an IT application, then Smartworks IoT is probably not the, the backend for you because uh, you would be missing on all that IoT ecosystem uh, stuff. Now, if you want to connect to a machine, to have a user be able to read data from that machine, uh, to be able to deploy predictive maintenance algorithms uh, next to that machine. All those type of use, use cases, then SmartWorks is clearly the, the, the candidate here. Um, and then we also have a, a couple more levels that, that are very important. The first one is that we are cloud agnostic and that we are able to deploy on premises. This means that we are able to either host the solution in our cloud or deploy it on your public cloud or your private cloud or your premises. Uh, making sure that the data belongs to you and that no one else can access it. And then the other part is that it's integrated in the Altair ecosystem. Every single year, we try to bring more simulation tools to the platform so that you can, you can leverage your existing models in, in the day-to-day -day operations of your, of your factory. And of course, all of this is under the same business unit business model so that you can maximize the 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 investment uh, that you already made on 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 those units so this, this was everything we we covered today how to really take your factory to the next level using a smartworks iot if if you have any questions or you or you would like to to speak to to myself or to an expert of the company in, in industry 4.0 just reach out to your account manager of confidence and and we will set that meeting up for you okay thank you very much